Living Corporate is brought to you by Textio. Today's top talent is everywhere, representing everyone. And our work environment should reflect the level of inclusion to meet that standard. Textio achieves this in building more equitable company cultures through the language we use in our job postings. That culture is formed one hire at a time, making the words we use to reach more diverse candidates all the more important. Our advanced language insights and employer brand content is what drives our mission of inclusion. Through our industry-leading application of artificial intelligence and machine learning, we're able to widen companies' reach in finding and building upon the very diverse talent that empowers a culture of belonging. Every door should be open to every qualified job seeker. Again, that's Textio. Hello, hello, and today um, on the group chat on Radical Change with Vonda Page, what I'm going to do is I just want to take a couple of minutes, right? And I want to talk about um, the importance of motivation in the context of not giving up. So I think that when you think about not giving up, there are so many different ways to think about it. And one of the ways that I think about not giving up is particularly when it comes to knowing that you have a goal you want to accomplish, knowing that there is something that you want to do, knowing that you have a very particular, a very special, a very specific thing that you want to accomplish. And no matter what, right, still moving forward towards accomplishing that thing, even when it gets difficult, even when you feel like giving up, even when it feels really, really challenging, even when it feels almost impossible, you still, you still want to give yourself that inside, I want to say that Eminem motivation, right? That internal motivation that makes you say, I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to do what I need to do to not give up. And I feel like not giving up is like the mission. I feel like the mission is not giving up because I feel like not giving up, right, expands across how you think about doing anything, right? So if I think about like right now, right, I'm on a mission to get back in shape. And so for me, getting back in shape means like I can do 25 push-ups at a time smooth without like, uh, right? I get to 25 and I'm like, yeah, right? I can do 100 squats smooth, right? I can do, you know, one leg um, pivot squats smooth, right? Eight on each side, up and down, right? So like I have these in my mind, right? Goals that I have. Now, I was trying last week or yesterday, Sunday, I was working on my push-ups and I was kind of disappointed that I couldn't do as many as I thought I could do. I think I only got to like 16 or something like that. And I was disappointed. But then I had to say, well, a month ago, you was only at like eight or nine, right? And so then I had to think, okay, well, what is the problem? How come I'm not at 25 push-ups yet? Well, because I'm not doing it every day. Every time in the past where I have, you know, up my push-up game, right, the way that I do that is I do push-ups every day. I see how many I do. I do the maximum. I stretch really, really good, right? And then the next day, I do the maximum again, and I try to beat the maximum, right? Depending on how far I got in that first set, I go back and I see how many I can do in the second set, right? based on how I feel. Now, when I know that I am working a strategic plan, right, to get up to the amount of push-ups that I feel like, oh, this makes me feel powerful. This makes me feel strong. This makes me feel good. When I get to that point, right, I know what it is and I feel amazing. Well, between then and now, I know what amazing is going to feel like, but I also know it feels easier to give up sometimes because who feels like doing push-ups because they hurt, <laughs> right? And trying to do them the right way. And then, you know, I have these nails that are getting kind of too long because they grow fast. 
And so like, you know, all of these little things that really don't have anything to do with it. But what they can do is, number one, they can distract. So when you're trying to not give up, right, and you're saying to yourself, I'm not going to give up, and you're going to take the advice of don't give up, the first thing that you have to recognize is that part of not giving up is don't let things distract you, right? And so I could get distracted or I have been distracted from the push-ups because I was worried about working on my glutes because I'm trying to look cute in some pants, Okay, so like that's the confession. So I wasn't really working on the push ups because I'm not really worried about how this part looks, but I want to look a certain way in my pants. And I know that if I focus on a certain type of exercise over a, you know, 30, 60 day period of time, I know what the result is going to be because I've done it before. And so the same determination that I'm deciding, like, okay, well, I'm determined, right, to, you know, make sure my pants look how I want them to look you know, in, in 45 days or whatever, I can make that same determination about how many push-ups I'm going to do, right? And I can reframe how I think about the push-ups, not just in being strong, but like, okay, well, maybe don't I want some cock diesel, you know, biceps, right? And I want tricep definition and I want some shoulder definition, right? Or And, and some pectorals. So I could like do that, right? But the, the moral around, you know, um, not giving up and being determined, right, is that you can be distracted from that thing, right? And so when you tell yourself, okay, I'm not going to give up, right, you have to not let distractions get in the way. That's number one. The second thing is I think that it's about not letting detractors, right, detractors get in your way, right? So people who are going to, you know, talk nonsense, people are going to um, you know, be down on you negatively, you know, in terms of like, oh, I don't think you should do that. Or like, you know, saying things to you, like telling you how things sound. See, I feel like anybody who is for you, anybody who is on your team, anybody who really cares about you, they are going to help you. And they really going to help you. They're going to support you. They're not going to half-ass do it, but they're going to help you in their way. This is not saying that they're going to be able to devote, you know, 40 hours a week for the rest of their life helping you out. But I'm talking about they're going to be there for you. When you when you are like, Dag, who do I have or who can I count on? You know, that's a person that you can call. Now, whether or not they have the capacity at that time, that's something different, right? So those of you who know me <clears throat> know that I talk about the seven C's or seven certainties to secure change success. And I want you to think about change success about in the standpoint of transformation or transition management, right? Because change is something that we necessarily, we can't manage it, even though we can control how we interact with change. And often, right, we can control how we decide to interact with change. The thing is how we how we experience it and how we go into it. And so when it comes to what I call the seven certainties of change, right, I break them down into these seven areas. And so depending on the type of transformation, depending on the type of challenge, and depending on where you are, right, individually, where you are in your development, in your growth, right, in your journey, that's how you're going to be able to address it. So real quick, I'm going to give you the seven certainties of change and break them down real quick. And then we're going to talk about them in a little bit more um, detail around not giving up and around determination. So the seven certainties are what I believe that when they are in place, they help to make change suck less. So change, right? We are all naturally predisposed to dislike change, to resist change, to, you know, um, in every way, right, right, maintain the status quo. And that is a perfect example, right, as to one of the reasons why, right, we are struggling right now in terms of trying to get people to understand what the status quo is, uh, understand what, what the change is, right, and to adapt to it because they refuse to. So let's take, for example, the fact that we all know that there are more, right, 
um black latina uh asian um and indigenous people in america than white people we know that it is we know that it is right but where are the black people and indigenous people and the poor brown people right they are not being counted because they are either incarcerated or classify as an undocumented um, undocumented worker or an undocumented immigrant or something like that. But we already know that. And the reason that we continue right along this trajectory, right, is because people don't want to adapt to change, right? So people like comfort, people like the status, people like to stay where they are. People like to be you know, in that sweet spot of comfort so that they can just roll on. But when we're in that sweet spot of comfort, we don't grow. And if we're trying to, right, um, at least advance beyond where we are, whether it's intellectually, emotionally, physically, emotionally, financially, I said emotionally, right? It doesn't matter. When you're trying to make a change, when you're trying to do something, you have to put in some effort. So back to me with the push-ups. Push-ups hurt. They hurt. Until you get really good at them, they hurt. And even when you get really good at them, when you start doing variations of push-ups, like the diamond push-ups or the out push-ups, or you start varying your leg positions or your hips, like 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 you push-ups hurt. But in that discomfort, you grow, right? So you grow in terms of the muscle fiber, right, that you get, right? But you grow in the endurance that you can do more push-ups the next time. You can more do more diverse push-ups, right? So like now, I'm going to test it out today and see how many diamond push-ups I could do. Because I think last week I could only do maybe like, I don't know, eight or something like that. But diamond push-ups use a different part of the pectorals. They use a different part of your back, right? And so, and so as, as, as you get uncomfortable, <clears throat> as you grow in that challenge of that thing that you said, well, I'm not going to give up. I'm, I'm determined to do it. So I am determined, right, to be able to do 20 smooth, clean push-ups at any moment. So if somebody is talking nonsense and I'll be like, I bet you can't even do 25 push-ups. And they're going to say, I bet you can't do 25 push-ups. And no matter what I have on, I don't care what outfit I look have on, I'm going to take my glasses off. I'm going to sit them to the side, pop out my area, and I'm going to drop. Doom, 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 doom. And I'm going to do 25 push-ups. That's not going to be no uh, next month. That's going to be like in a week and a half, I'm going to be able to do that, right? Because I'm determined to do it, right? And I'm determined not to give up. Now, doing push-ups and being able to be do push-ups, that I think is kind of like a little vanity kind of project, but it's something that I like to do and I like to be in competition with myself. And every now and then, yeah, I like to show off, right? And what what better way than for a 53-year-old woman to show off by doing 25 push-ups like at the drop of a hat, like, like that's like some Michelle Obama type boss shit right there. Right. So I like to be able to do that. Okay. So back to the seven C's. So when you are right, thinking about making sure or trying to adopt that thing that you want to get to do, that you want to build a habit of doing the thing that you want to transition to the thing that you want to be doing right. And know how to do it. In order for you to do that, right, you need some things put in place for it to really happen. Now, the harder the thing is, the more of these things are necessary. And I've also, right, determined that it's not even just the harder the things are, it's also how many of them, it's also where you're coming from at the time where you're trying to do them and all the circumstances around it. And so I think that these are the seven C's that you need if you're trying to do hard stuff, if you're trying to really get some things done, if you're trying to make sure what you're doing has certain outcomes, this is how you do it. Okay, so boom, number one. So the first C is culture. Being in the right surroundings in the right environment so that you can get stuff done. So for me, right, there's nobody here but me and the dog. I don't. I have a culture of I can do what the heck I want. So for me, my life is a little bit different. Now, if I had toddlers, and homeschooling, how the heck would I have time to learn how to, to, to do 25 push-ups? I don't think I could. 
I don't think I could, right? Um, if I had a family that was a super like on the go family and we were never home or still or or something like that, maybe I wouldn't, right? There's a whole lot of things that could depend. But culture is like everything in your surroundings, everything in your environment to support what it is that you're trying to do. So if it's a culture of fitness, do you have the time? Right. And is everybody around you into fitness? If not, then it's going to be more difficult. Number two, right, is the capacity. Do you have the capacity to undertake a change? That means do you have the time and do you have the space and the resources? Now, uh, when my house was being painted and the carpet and everything was being done because I had a whole disaster in my house last year, I did not have the capacity to be doing push ups and any kind of fitness in my house. I was going to the gym rarely, but not that much because my house wasn't set up and I didn't have the mental capacity that much to even go to the, you know, to the gym that I wasted like a year membership on while the house was getting redone. Right. And so now, right. I have three workout areas, right. One for, um, to spin, right. And, and kind of do meditation and that kind of thing. I have my other area where I do like, you know, my BOSU and my Pilates, you know, and weightlifting, right? And then I have another area, you know, where I mostly do, uh, you know, yoga, stretching, you know, um, foam rolling and all that kind of stuff. And once um, the garage gets cleaned up, I'm going to have a gym in the basement that's going to be a boxing gym. That way, all of that will be concentrated. But the point is, I'll have the capacity. So not only is the culture already there, but I have the capacity, the time, the space, the resources, all of the stuff necessary to be able to get into whatever kind of shape I want to get into. And I like to call it boxing shape. Boxing shape to me is when like your muscles are defined and you can really like see, you know, like you could see, you could see muscles. And I like that. So that's the shape I'm going for. And so in order to do that, I'm culture, boom, done. Capacity in the works. I have enough, but it's, it's getting built up, right? I can build that and you can build capacity. Number three, right? A coalition of people around you to help you, right? Um, I, I have a coalition uh, of people, right? But I don't need a coalition for those two things because I already have those under wraps. Now, if I was struggling in certain other areas, which I can give tons of examples, but in this example, I don't need a coalition. But let's say I was trying to run a marathon. I probably would need a coalition. Let's say I was trying to do senior Olympics. I would need a coalition. If I ever decide to get back into tennis, USTA tennis, oh, I'm going to need a coalition because I'm going to need a coach. I'm going to need a trainer. I'm going to need a doctor. I'm going to need a nurse. I'm going to need Brittany. Like, I'm going to need a lot of people. And so, right, it depends on what the transformation is. It depends on how big the transformation is. It depends on how transformational the transition is or the transformation. Okay. So you have your culture, you have your capacity, you have your coalition. If you have those three things in place or those three things, right? Then you also next talk about competence. Competence is, do you have the skills? Do you actually know how to do the thing that you're trying to do? And competence is where people fall off. Competence is why I had a job for 30 years and why my friend Megan has had a job for many years, right? In organizational change management, because people are not competent when it comes to helping people adopt change, helping people adapt new habits, new ways of working, new ideas, right? And and, and all of that, we could talk about that in, in so many more ways, right? In more details, but right that's a whole nother piece. So competence is huge. It's huge, right? So you have culture, right? You have capacity, you have coalition, you have competence. But when you have those four things in place, I'm telling you, the next thing is to make up your mind that yeah, you're doing it. And so that's conviction, right? Conviction is boom, here's where I'm going. Conviction is I'm calm. I'm good because this is what I'm doing. And I have made up my mind. That's where the don't give up is. It's like, I'm convicted. And I can be convicted because I have all this other stuff, right? Makes sense? I got all this other stuff. I got I got all that. I can be convicted. So now, now here's that, here's that doom, 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 right? Here's the M&M, right? Here is the, 
you know, till I collapse, right? Here is, here's eighth mile, right? Here it is. You courage. That's it. Now it's it's time for you to do your part. Your part is diving in. Your part is 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 digging in. Your part is leaning in, right? Your part is courage, right? And then after that, the last thing that's left is commitment. And it's it's sticking to it. And the sticking to it is I'ma do it no matter whether the distraction. I'ma do it no matter whether the doubters. I'ma do it whether you know or not I got you know um dastardly uh demons <laughs> right hunting me down right it's saying that i'm going to be determined now whether that determination is out of motivation inspiration you know um aspiration i don't think that part matters right whether it's aspiration you know motivation it's an inspiration you know you're dedicated to something it's it's inf- i don't know but the way I think about it, the way I see it, it's all about not giving up. And it's all about going back to, like, to me, that's what radical is, right? And the change is is going back to saying, I'm not going to give up because I don't care what the situation is, right? Somebody or something, whether it's up here or whether it's out here in the universe, right? Somebody or something is telling you you can't do it. Somebody or something is telling you you shouldn't do it. Or maybe this or maybe that or or this and that and the other, right? This, that, and the third, right? And so you get to decide, right? You get the opportunity. You get to say, well, this is how I'm going to show up. You get to say, this is how I'm going to roll. You get to say, this is what I'm going to do. No matter what, you still get to do that. Now, of course, you can't control all the outcomes, but I'm a damn sure to tell you, if you put no seven C's in place, right, if you have really done some serious examination on your own beliefs, right, and the impact of your beliefs, you know, on your character, right, which is how you show up in the world, if you've done some of that work, I feel like this thing is not that bad. I feel like it's not that bad, you know? And so I want to, you know, encourage you today that, you know, no matter how challenging things are, that you don't have to give up, right? I want to encourage you that you don't have to worry about the distractions. You don't have to worry about the detractors, right? You don't have to worry about, um, you know, any of the doubters. What you need to do is maintain your determination and maintain your focus on what you see your destiny as being. Like I look at myself as I already know, you know, who I am and and what I'm about and, and all of that. Right. And I know that a lot of people don't. I know that a lot of people are still trying to figure out, you know, hey, well, what do I want to do with the next 30 years, the next 40 years, the next 50 years, shoot, the next 70 years. Right. People don't have it figured out. Um, And it takes a while. And sometimes, you know, we do know what we want to do, but we just don't know how to do it. And so I kind of look at that's one of the reasons, you know, that I'm here right on this earth is to help people, you know, ask themselves some tough questions and maybe help people, you know, get answers. And so um, I just want to say today, right, that, um, you know, it is super, right, important to, you know, to be determined, right? And it's super important to, you know, realize that not giving up on whatever that thing is that you feel is key, that you feel is core, right? That you feel is critical, that's going to align with who you are as a person. And so when I just, when I think about myself, I'm not going to give up when it comes to alleviating anti-blackness and helping people un- unlearn that whole system. And before they unlearn it, they have to unpack it. And so that means having conversations, right? That are going to be difficult, right? That's going to be doing things that's going to require work, right? It's going to be, you know, putting a strategy together, like, okay, how do I get these 25 pushups done? Okay, well, I'm, I know that the number I want to get to is 25. I'm hovering around 16. I know I'm not doing it every day. What is the time block I'm going to dedicate just to push-ups every day? Will I push up, do push-ups right after I get off the spin bike? I could because you don't really use any upper body on the spin bike. So I could combine push-ups and spinning together every day, right? And make that part of my strategy. 
that's a really good idea. The other thing I could do is I could combine it with stretching, which I do all the time. And since I'm already on the floor when I'm stretching, I could really combine push-ups with foam rolling and stretching, right? But it's a matter of not giving up on what I want the end result to be and knowing, you know, I do have time when I want to have that done by, right? Like literally, I want to, you know, um, by uh, August 27th, right? I want to be able to do 25 smooth push-ups. That means I have 12 days. So that means the, na the next 12 days, I need to create a plan to do that. So if you think about what is the thing you want to do, in the next 10 days, in the next five days, in the next 16 days, because August has 31 days. So if you think about what you want to get accomplished, right, in the next 16 days, what does that look like, right? What actually does what you want to get accomplished, what does it look like at the end? And then let's backtrack on that, right? What is it going to take for you to do it, right? The other goal that I have, done that is actually by the 25th so i have 10 days left left on that right is to get all 30 um episodes of um when white people have had enough to get all 30 episodes uploaded by them right um i think i'm at like 17 left to go right and so it's a matter of right not giving up so that's all i got y'all that's all i got for today i have don't give up right i have be determined right? I have don't let doubters, um, don't let distraction and don't let detractors, right? Don't let any of those things, um, right? Uh, keep you from doing what you need to do. Don't let any of those things keep you, right? From determining your own destiny because you can do that. Now I'm not saying, um, that you're not going to have problems, uh, 53 year old black woman, not telling you that you're not going to have problems, that you're not going to have issues, that you're not going to have discomfort, that you're not going to have challenge. But what I'm saying is don't give up on anything, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how bad it gets, no matter what, right? Just don't give up on your goals. Don't give up. Don't give up on your dreams, right? Don't give up on your hopes, right? And, and definitely don't give up on yourself. So, hey, thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks for joining the group chat, Radical Change. And hey, I will see y'all next time. Thanks so much. Bye. This episode of Live in Corporate is brought to you by Blind. Blind is a safe, trusted community of more than 5 million verified professionals. Head over to teamblind.com to get the latest insights into salaries, company reviews, and interview experiences at thousands of companies worldwide.